God, I thank you tonight for your word that leads us to an understanding of your greatness and your love for us. So pray your blessing upon tonight, and we just pray for everybody that's present that we might be able to receive those things that uh, you would desire us for, for us to know, and then we can go out and live our lives better, more confident, more controlled, knowing that you got us all the way to yonder's glory. So bless us now in a very special way. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, good evening again, everybody. Good evening. I'm so grateful for uh, <clears throat> this opportunity uh, to just bring another lesson. I'm not going to be long tonight. Bless uh, you. Day. <laughs> bless you. Uh, uh, but I do want to dig in a little bit into our theme for the year we've been talking about uh, uh, let Jesus lead you and the scripture that we grounded in uh, that we chose uh, I believe is John 14 uh, 6 uh, when Jesus says I am the way the truth uh, and the life mm -hmm. so we spent time talking about this I am part of it that uh, when he says I am, he's literally saying that I am God. He's testifying of himself uh, uh, to those that will follow him. It's a self-declaration. Uh, and then we start talking about the way piece of that text. And I didn't want to move uh, too far or uh, move away from that yet. I want to examine this this idea of his this way, the ways of God. If he says, if he says, I am the way, then what 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 are his ways? Hmm. You know, when he said when, when he says I am the way, he's literally saying, take on my likeness. Hmm. Uh Take on my character. Uh, take on the way I love. He's literally saying, take on my ways. I am the way. Huh? We don't, we don't, be, we don't, be, by, 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 by following in the way, we don't become the way. Uh, but we just are a part of the way. Huh? Because we take on the character of Jesus Christ. And so, if he says, I am the way, and we ought to take on his ways, and do, you know some people with some jacked up ways? Hmm? You know, people have family members, they say, oh man, she got ways like her dad. Mm -hmm. You ever heard people say that? Oh, he got ways uh, like his mama, grandfather, those type of things. We have ways, we have personality. We, we, genes are for real, do you believe that? Yeah. Huh? That the apple don't fall fall too far from the tree. Oh yeah. Yeah, Gene, you, you look like you look the way you look, not by luck, but because of two people came together. And you taking on certain ways, certain characteristics. Uh some we are knowledgeable of, or some things are just innate to our uh character. And so his ways. We want to talk about his his ways. Uh, this is David's uh, request in Psalm. Y'all go with me to Psalm one thirty nine. Uh huh. And so when we start looking at the ways of God, first thing we want to examine is his knowledge, the knowledge of God. Uh, a lot of way, a lot of reason why we act the way we act is because of what we know. Mm. You agree? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You, you, ever, you ever be driving the way you drive and you know the way you drive? Uh, and you get to certain parts and you, of the road and you slow down? Why you slow down? 
Cause we know. Mike, you kind of based on what you know. You know the road. You got a route that you take for work every day, huh? Is it some police on those routes? Yeah, you know where they are. And you drive accordingly based on what? What you know. What you know, huh? And so this, this idea of understanding God's ways uh, uh, helps us to understand uh, God and how he moves. Think about it. We do what we do based on what, part, part of why we do what we do is based on what we know. Right? Mm -hmm. huh? You go to work, because if you don't, what? <laughs> Can't pay yeah, them bills. They're going to find you. Everybody else is going to have a check on Fridays, and you, yours, you looking crazy, yours short. Huh? But you know this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so how you move, how you act, how you behave, a lot of it is based on what you know. You know why God is so cool? And why he, things don't upset him? Because he know a lot. He know a lot. <laughs> he know everything. He know everything. Yeah. Huh. David says in Psalm 139, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Huh? Reason why God, God, God tells us to follow in his way because he knows all about us. Huh? And not only, not only, not, not, I, I love this, not, when you think about God and the, his vast knowledge about, about the world, about the universe, about every individual, if, 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 if he knows what the, what, what's going on with the sparrow, Huh? He knows about us. Mm -hmm. And so his ways are grounded in what he knows. Uh, Psalms uh, 40, 44 and 21, David wrote, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought are far off. Can you, you imagine? Have you ever, have you ever were at a point of something and you couldn't figure it out? Yes. Huh? You ever had a form to fill out and you couldn't figure it out? Huh? Or maybe it was something, something needed to be done online and you couldn't figure it out to get it done. Yeah. And somebody come over and just hit a little old button and get you going. Yeah. Hmm? This is what David, David said, thou knowest you, God knows us. He tells us to follow him in the way because he, he knows all about us. He, our, thou knowest my down sitting and my up rising. Ah, uh, do you know what he's saying? He, he, he says, God knows what's going to happen at the close of the day. Mm. And God knows what's going to happen at the beginning of the day. You don't know, but he knows. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Mm. David says, God knows my down sitting mm -hmm. and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar Oh, David says, while I'm figuring it out, trying to figure it out, trying to understand it, trying to, you know, make it make sense, God understood it before it even entered my head. He understood my thoughts afar off. Huh? If you're going to follow God, shouldn't he understand? Should God have to wonder about you? Listen, if God is wondering, he's not God. Mm. God don't have to wonder. God ain't got to try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or figure out the clues mm. and, and connect the dots. God says, I am the dots. Mm. Huh. He knows our 
thoughts are far off. Our distant thoughts, God knows. Our daily walk. I love this. God knows our, he knows our habits. Mm-hmm. Look, look what the scripture says. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. Mm. Huh? God knows our habits. Yeah. Hmm? Those things that uh, we plan to do or things we're programmed to do. God is already acquainted with it. David simply says he knows my ways. But there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. God even knows my unspoken words. But there is not a word in my tongue that God doesn't know. Isn't that something? Anybody ever got tangled tongue? Yes. Huh? And couldn't get it out? Uh, or listen to somebody's tangled tongue and, and, what, and you just want to say, say it, just say it, say it. Uh, well, well, if you're not able to say it before God, guess what? He knows, he knows. what you're saying. You ever heard anybody crying and whimpering? And you, can, you couldn't get them to stop. Uh, you know, don't you feel bad? All you can do is just stand there. You know, when somebody's, you ever been around somebody that's inconsolable? You couldn't console them, so all you could do was just stand there. Yeah. Huh? And they're making these noises. You're like, man, I just, I wish I could do something. Guess what? God knows what those words are. Mm. Hmm. What's the extent of God's knowledge? Thou hast beset me behind and before, verse five, and laid thine hand upon me. God is into our surroundings. Thou has, God is behind me. He is before me. And he's laid his hand upon me. God, God is guiding me. Hmm? The greatness of his not of knowledge. I love look, look what David says. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. <laughs> Isn't that something? And here, and here, and it, you know the true part about it? David just talking about himself and trying to gain an understanding of self, huh? And and then and then David says, when when I put 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 remember because remember he started out with search me. Huh? With what you know about me, God, I want you to search me. Search me. And and and, and because you know me, you know my, my getting up, you know my going down, you know my thoughts are far off. David says, you know me better than I know myself. And David says, just to think about it, he says, man, I, I it, it's too, it's too wonderful. For me, huh? This is probably a joyful moment mm -hmm. for David. Well, his ways. What about his presence? One of one of the things that we can pinpoint about God's way, you know, He's this way, uh, or He's like this. Is and one thing that's innate, innate to his character is that God is always present. Not on, not only does is he full of knowledge, but God is also present. He is always present. Okay. Uh, look at here's here's the problem with God's presence. You can't escape it. Mm. Huh? If you're trying to run from God, to run from him is to run to him, because he's everywhere. Hmm? Look, at what, look at what David says. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? 
Where can, David says, where can I go and you not there? Yeah. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Hmm. It's not that God, that, that the relationship isn't broken, but it's not God leaving us, it's us leaving God. And so look, look, look at what, look at what David says. Uh, we, I want to, I want to get away from you. But David says, if I ascend up unto heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even thou shalt thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Huh. David says, I just cannot escape the presence of God. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Mm -hmm. huh. I love this. It might be midnight to us, mm -hmm. huh. but it ain't midnight to God. I love this. Mm -hmm. This is why God says, you can trust me to lead the way. You count on me knowing more than you know. And two, you can count on me always being present with you. Look at what, look what David says about uh, the depth of despair. Love this. In verse 8, just revisit it real quick. We can handle the heaven piece of it, but when you're at the wit's end, when you're in your hell, huh? God is there too. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful God that we serve? That he just doesn't deal with us in mountaintop experiences? Everybody know what it feels like to be blessed. Everybody know what it feels like to, you know, have increase in your life. But what about when you're going through? It's not hard to celebrate God when things are going well. But will God be with you through your storm? And I would argue, sisters and brothers, each and every one of us has a testimony that, that all of us have been in a one particular hell or another, and God has demonstrated his faithfulness because he's been there with us. Amen. Huh? All of us have that testimony that we've been able to count on God's presence, not at our best, but at our worst. You've been able to count on God. So there's a depth in that presence that he's, he's there, not only in the good times, but he's there in the tough times. Amen. His knowledge, his presence, and then I want to close with the wisdom of God. For thou hast, verse 13, mm -hmm. for thou hast possessed my reins. Uh, reins, the reins are mentioned 15 times in the Bible, and literally, the reins refer to uh, kidneys in an older meaning of the word, but in scriptures, reign uh, for our purposes, uh, they mean to govern. Uh, they mean to uh, direct, kind of like the reins of a horse are used to yeah. uh, guide a horse. With the, that's what these reins are, are, are for. It says, uh, the scripture says yea the darkness hide it not, not, I'm sorry verse 13 for thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made you believe that? Oh, yeah. 
Why? Why do you believe that? Because he said it. Yeah, he says it. But what's proof? You live it every day. Yeah. What's proof that you're fearfully and wonderfully made? I'm telling you, the way God made us, the, the original part is better than anything that man can manufacture. I tell you, you better try to keep your teeth, <laughs> many of them as you can, because they don't make them better than the ones God made you. Huh? Your, 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 your health, uh, people can get a heart transplant, but it ain't like the one God made you. Huh? David says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know our bodies, you know our bodies are airtight? Yes. You know that? And waterproof. Waterproof. You know that? You can wash your hands without fear of the water that's outside contaminating. And there's only one way the water can enter in your body, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you got you to take it in intentionally. Huh? And so we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, you, you, how many of you believe that your big toe is important? Oh, yes. Uh, your, your show is. Huh? Your big toe controls your balance. Yes. Listen, yeah. you don't think it's important? Mm -hmm. Lose it. Mm -hmm. Huh? Joe could be wobbling and he ain't drunk. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? I'm telling you, we are fearfully, all of our body parts have assignments. Yeah. I, I remember one time doctor said well, about the spleen. You can lose the spleen. You don't need that spleen. Well, what is it in there for? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. I think uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what, what is that surgery I had. Uh, appendix. Huh? You can live without your appendix. Yeah. Why is it in there? Huh? You need it for a while, but. Some people it bothers them, some people it doesn't. Why come it doesn't bother everybody? Huh? Some people have wisdom to problems, some people don't. Mm -hmm. You know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And here's the trip part about there's only one you in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. out, of, oh, out of over six billion people in the world, there's only one you. You're we are fearfully and wonderfully made. David says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance not he is my, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. And eyes did see my substance, his wisdom, yet being unperfect in thy book, all my members were written, which in contents were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. I love this. Not only, not only is God wise and, and full of full of wisdom and full of uh, of knowledge and da da David says part of what God knows is me. I make up part of that knowledge base. God's got all the facts. Just like God's got all the facts about the universe and you know there's nothing that's going on in the universe that's catching God by supplies. He knows where all the planets are. He knows where all the stars are. He knows where all the asteroids are. If there are any space creatures out there, he's aware of that too. Nothing's got him uh, uh, with. Nothing is surprising him. Nothing has got him off balance. Nothing is catching him off guard. This is God we're talking about. But of all the things that he knows, part of what he knows is a little bit concerning us. Huh? He knows us too. Hmm? Every little thing, every little detail, God knows about us. And that's refreshing. That's refreshing tonight because we're living in a world that's trying to deny the power of God, right. trying to put the power of God 
in the hands of men. Huh? But there's, man is not wise enough. Man is too careless. Man doesn't love with his power and his influence. Man, man doesn't show mercy. Man, 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 man will destroy before he builds. Man will tear down before he restores. And so I love this about God. He does what only he can do. He dies for our sins. His, 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 his ways are grounded in his knowledge, mm. in his presence, and in his wisdom. Mm. And that's what God wants, wants us to be, uh, to grow in, grow in our knowledge of him, be wise like him, and then be able to count on his presence. No, love this by David. David says, there's nowhere I can go and God not be with me. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. So that means if I'm, I'm feeling abandoned, am I feeling alone? Am I really alone? No. It may sound crazy, but I'm not alone. Hmm? I have something dynamic. I have something fantastic. On my side, the God of the universe knows me. And David says, I want to know him. God bless you. May keep you as our prayer on tonight. We're going to go home. Next, next week, I'll keep you two hours. <laughs>